Hi there. Terry Bailey, Senior Minister of Indian Run Christian Church in East Canton, Ohio, continuing to uh, speak about the prospect of finding joy in the midst of trial and tribulation. And today, I'd like to turn my attention to probably the greatest, most significant, most important example of this principle, not only in the Bible, but in all of time. In the 16th chapter of the Gospel, according to John, Jesus is, for the third or fourth time, now trying to prepare his apostles for his death, telling them what is coming, and they are characteristically reluctant to take hold of this difficult truth. And, and so Jesus tries to speak to them plainly, and yet hopefully. And he says, Verse 16, a little while, and you will no longer see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And some of the disciples then said to one another, What is this thing he is telling us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me, because I go to the Father. And so they were saying, What is this? He says, a little while. We do not know what he's talking about. And Jesus knew that they wished to question him. And he said to them, Are you deliberating together about this that I said, A little while and you will not see me, And again a little while and you will see me? Truly, truly, I say to you that you will weep and lament, But the world will rejoice. You will grieve your grief will be turned into joy. Whenever a woman is in labor, she has pain. Because her hour has come. And when she gives birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy that a child has been born into the world. Therefore, you too have grief now but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and no one will take your joy away from you. And then let me skip down to the last verse of the chapter, verse 33. These things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Jesus spoke to his disciples and knew that he would be sealed in a tomb beyond their sight, but that he would come forth from the tomb and be restored to their sight, and that he would go to the Father, and that he would come back again. All these things he has promised it is completely understandable why the apostles were so slow to want to accept the truth of his coming death. And yet in retrospect, completely understandable that all the joy we are ever to really have flows from his resurrection, from his promise of eternal life, as can be delivered only by one who has so signally conquered death. Yes, in the world, we will have tribulation, and we have it now, and we have had it before, and we will have it again, but take courage, for he has overcome the world. If you would pray with me. Father, you have promised that we will be made like your son Jesus Christ and help us to continually experience that change even now and in becoming like him to understand what he has done and to find in him and in his resurrection and in his promise of eternal life the wellspring of all joy joy in the face of all the sorrow the world has to offer 
for we ask it in his name. Amen.